We know a big heart, piece of your heart is with PSG. Some of it, though, is reserved for Arsenal. You must be gutted. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a tough night to take for all the, the Arsenal fans. The, of the way it happened, obviously, with the, uh, the late goal for Olympiacos and that, that huge miss by Aubameyang in, well, in the last minute of, of at the time of extra time. Uh, but also, let's be honest, it was a poor performance. I think the attitude was not right. They looked a bit complacent. They had no shot on target for the, f for the first, what, 75 minutes of that game. So, in the end, it's a harsh defeat and it's a harsh elimination. But also, on the night tonight, they were just off their game too much. Who do you blame more, Stevie? Or Bamiang for that late miss or David Luiz and his defending? Um, oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, think, I think, at the end of the day, we all make mistakes as players. And the better players learn from the mistakes. Right. And what David Luiz didn't do was he didn't learn from his, his first mistake with the first goal. Because when you're in a zone, regardless of the opposition, when the ball comes in your area, you have to attack the ball. He didn't do it. And he didn't learn because the ball's flung in again at the end of the game and he didn't attack it. So uh, I'd have to say absolutely David Luiz. It's an ongoing issue with Arsenal. Defending set pieces is a problem area for them. And Aubameyang scores a great goal. And even after all the struggles that you've had in this game, he scores that great goal, and now you're through. Yeah. All you have to see is the last two minutes of the match, and then you, that's it. You're going on to the next round. It wasn't pretty. It, was, it, was, it must have been a learning experience for Arsenal. That's the way that Arteta would have spawned this whole story. But you're not able to defend properly in a set piece, and then see you guys later. Take care. Here's the other thing I would say about Arsenal. For whatever reason, they thought that after winning the first game, the first leg, one nothing, that it was all it was all done. That's the way they approached this game, as if they had already advanced. The truth of the matter is that where Arsenal is right now, they're not good enough to be complacent. They're not good enough to lack energy. They're not good enough to just be a team that is going to show up and just say, "Oh, we're just going to play around and we'll see our way through to the next round." They're not good enough to be doing that. The players know that, but the problem is that they cannot find any sort of consistency with their level of play. One day they look good, the next day they don't look so good. One half they look okay, then the next half they look terrible. But the one thing that they've been consistent about is poor in defending set pieces. Stevie, I'll tell you, after the game, lambasting his defense. Four goals conceded in the last two matches from set pieces. Surely this is something you can work on in the training ground, isn't it? I know that we talked about <laughs> the personnel that Arsenal have and that it's not good enough. But surely this is something you can actually physically help with on a day-to-day -day training. You, you can work on the training field all day, every day, seven days a week. But if you have players who don't get it, and they'll tell you they get it, but then they step on the field and continue to make the same mistakes, and that's exactly what Arsenal have been doing for the last two or three seasons, defensively. So... There comes a time, and I've been saying it all year long, there comes a time when it's not about the tactics or the coach, it's about the personnel. And David Luiz in particular has shown that time and time again he's making mistakes as a centre-back and it's costing his team. And until there's a change, until David Luiz has moved out of that position mm. and a better player's put in, as you asked me, you can work all day long on a training field, but if you've got players who can't do the job, it isn't changing. Jules, big picture. How big is this defeat for Arsenal, considering you could put up an argument this was a great chance for them to qualify for the Champions League? Yeah, it's a huge blow because of that, obviously, because that was maybe not the easiest way because they can still finish fifth, let's say, if Man City are banned for next season's Champions League. They're only four points behind but you would fancy them in that competition. So that's a huge blow. It's a huge blow for Mikel Arteta as well because it's a proper step back of what he's been trying to do and the results have been OK since he took over. There's been some improvement on the, on the, field, on the field going forward, especially attacking-wise. Defensively, still the same issues and he hasn't addressed them well enough at the moment and they haven't improved enough. But for him, it would be a proper setback. And I think this is the issue tonight. Psychologically, they go again on Monday night in the FA Cup. But that's a hell of a tricky game away mm. from home against a team that will have nothing to lose in a cup game in a hostile environment against a team that is playing really well in the lower leagues, but also a team that would love that cup game and love 
trying to put more pressure on Arsenal, especially after tonight. So the next few games will be very important for the way Arteta tries to get his players back on track for Monday night's game. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.